The topic of conversation this morning on tea or coffee is on black tax, a pressure on single working class youths. Now, on the first hour of the show, we had a look at some very interesting response um, to our question, our conversation on black tax, talking about the pressure, you know, on, on working class youths. Now, we have a guest in the studio who will be helping us deconstruct this conversation in name and person of Tunji Babajide, who is a sought-after certified therapist and life coach. He is a lead consultant and CEO at Awesome Effect Consulting um, as a United Kingdom certified life coach with emotional intelligence certification among others. He has helped people with addictions, abuse, um, child related issues, um, esteem issues, domestic violence, personality assessments, personal development, and the likes. He has also helped to diagnose and resolve problematic disbeliefs, um, beliefs rather, behaviors, relationship issues, feelings, and sometimes physical responses through group, individual, or family therapy and coaching. And I have to say as well, he is a friend of the house that we're always so excited to have. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Good the morning, Lady. Good to see you again. Good to see you. It's been, it's been a while. It's been a while. The last time you came, we were not as um, big, uh, as yeah. elaborate in your word as, 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 you as this now. as well. Really impressed about the increase, the growth, yeah. uh, and the expansion. Thank uh, you very much. We very, do, very, very glad we to do, associate with the house. Thank you very much. We do appreciate yeah. whenever you come in. Pleasure now, to be here. just a reminder to our viewers at home, the phone lines are open. You can join the conversation. If you have a question um, for our guest, if you have a comment to make on Black Tax, the number to call 0812 one eight two zero one five four so let's get straight into the conversation now right. um um, um, earlier on the show, I deconstructed that black tax is actually jargon that came from South Africa, you know, um, that they're using to, um, because of the overwhelming pressure on um, young working class people who, mm -hmm. who, were, who had to support their families. Mm -hmm. But from your perspective, what is black tax? Well, uh, from a Nigerian perspective, yes. um, I'll call it the Ogen 2K. <laughs> <laughs> um, sadly, it's a deliberate... Um, Thing that has or that has been infused into our culture right. as, as Africans um, in such a way that you have to give back to the immediate community that yeah. raised you, um, whether they deserve it or not, um, it's just a part of the culture. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's also a delicate balance between meeting the expectations of people in your immediate family mm. and meeting your own personal needs. Mm. Um, and truly, if, if we're going to get to the root of it, uh, because I like to look at issues from the root, I think that black tax is a symptom. Interesting. I think that the root of it is people pleasing. Mm. At the root of everyone who feels obliged to you know, run with the jargon of black or tax, black if tax, I mean to say yeah. that. If you look at it, yeah. Urgent 2K. <laughs> Uh, you you got to look at it from the perspective of being a people pleaser. Mm. Now, there's nothing wrong if you're nice. There's nothing wrong if you support a cousin, you support an aunt. Um, but it's about the choices and about how to set boundaries. Mm. You know, maybe I'll add a third one. The ability to be assertive and not being aggressive. The ability to say no. Um, and what are the indicators that shows that someone is a people pleaser? One when you are afraid of rejection, all right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who get to a point, because I found out that people who do black tax get to a point where they get into resentment, where they feel, oh, Mr. X is always asking me for money. I gave Mr. X money, money mm -hmm. um, X, Y, Z amount two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now it's coming back. So sometimes it's even not even good for their mental health. But because it's, I call it the dependency circle. Right. You know, where you validate your esteem mm -hmm. by the things you do for other people. Now, like I said earlier, there's nothing wrong with it, yeah. but there must be boundaries and there must be you not losing yourself because every time you ride on that people-pleasing journey, you lose integrity to yourself, to your mm. goals, to your personality. You know, so beyond us talking about the black tax, let's get to the root. If you talk about black tax, mm. alone, it's like talking about the fruit that is not bringing sweet, mm. you know, outcome. And we're like, okay, let's cut it. Yeah. and let's, but, but if we're going to get to the root of it, to help people who are in that dependency circle, we've got to get to the root of it. And it's people-pleasing. People-pleasing mm. is not an offshoot of low self-esteem. Um, hmm. People who've had parents who were not there for them emotionally. Right. People who had trauma in their childhood. Right. People who fear rejection. People who don't want to be abandoned. So they, so they say no when they should say yes. Mm. 
all right? So they begin to lose themselves because there's something it does for them. When they say yes to you, um, I need to pay for my daughter's work, and you give them 25K. That feeling is not a bad one. It's part of the inter interdependency that God created us to always have. However, once you begin to stretch beyond your limits, then you are getting to a point where you begin to feel um, so, so, so person. I did something for them last year. I did for them. It's my birthday. They didn't call me. Then it becomes mm -hmm. entitled because you don't. The best thing about giving is not for you to expect that the people you give things to can give back to mm -hmm. you. It must come from the perspective that um, I owe it to my society so that I don't become a burden mm -hmm. to the people that I live with and the world at large that, yeah. you know. Yeah look at the things that i do yeah. oh a very interesting perspective but you know i mean okay so some people for instance in the yoruba tradition they'll say that um, um an indicator of a true omoluabi is somebody who is able to support their family and yeah. all of that so, yeah. you know i'm glad that you said that we need to look at the symptom we need to look at it as a symptom we need, we need to look at the roots yeah. so when we when we for instance examine the cultural roots of this black tax um, of a thing mm -hmm. not particularly you know owing to friends but to family, family. you know what what would your response be to for instance traditions and cultures that say that uh, that's pointed out as an indicator of a true son or a lawyer or, or a loyal daughter you mm -hmm. know an authentic child of uh, that seeing that child as somebody who supports their parents you know with their own finance what would mm -hmm. your, your your response to that be so i always say that culture is pressure from dead men. Interesting. Um, so there are a lot of culture that are due to be reviewed. There are a lot of culture that um, shouldn't be continually validated because the world is changing, you know? Because I've seen a lot of people, when I sit on the counseling table, on the therapy table, I've seen a lot of people who have grown resentment because they've not been able to put a balance right. to their own needs, uh, building a portfolio for their own investment, and also being there. So our culture, you will agree with me, is quite entitled. Mm. Um, I used to live in a community many years ago when I moved to Lagos. I used to live in a community where if you buy a car, people that don't greet you will tell someone else to say, so, so, so person, oh, you bought a car. Mr. Tunji bought a car. They didn't even tell us. I'm like, really? <laughs> 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 yes, I know that in a community, you should have, you know, a level of interpersonal relationship. Mm. But somehow I found out that in, in the Southwest, particularly the one I'm very familiar with, um, they feel that it's a right to know about what's happening to you. I mean, that community was so bad that when we buy stuffs, we don't bring it out of our car in the, during the day. We bring it at night because wow. you want to avoid, you know, people celebrating things that, that does norms. Yeah. But you see, when you grow up in an environment where you are deprived of the basic things, right, right. Um, you begin to amplify what should just be um, a gloss over. So largely, mm. um, I think that it's necessary to put the balance um, between what the culture is saying and what you can afford. I mean, I've seen a lot of ladies say to me, they say I'm a strong woman, and that's why they believe I can handle it. And already, you're earning 400K, 250k has gone into a cousin, your mom. I mean, so I, I always put it, when you get to that dependency circle, you need to sit back, mm. do a money diary, and find out where does all my money go. One, two, you need to now have a list. Who are my primary commitments? Who are my secondary commitments? Mm. Who are my tertiary commitments? All right? Mm. Then thirdly, you need to have a budget. Mm. All right? Because if you don't have a budget, you will find out that you are crossing the line regularly, and you go back into your closet and you're already feeling resentful, you're feeling, you know, used, you're feeling uh, that people are taking advantage of you because the reality is you are not responsible for other people's happiness. Right. You are responsible for yours, right? So that ability to be able to say no and not feel bad. You know, people say no and they feel mm, bad about yeah. it. Yeah. You know, so the, the problem is personal. It's not about the people asking you for money. Right. It's about your own, you know, uh, dependency mm. disorder, you know, or your, uh, uh, your, the problems that you haven't dealt with from childhood. But I can tell you, people pleasing, mm. fear of abandonment, fear of rejection, they are the root cause. Right. So it's not like factors. you are dismissing black tax completely, but yeah. you are saying that, uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, okay. you're essentially saying that it needs to be done with 
a sense of balance, balance. when you are actually giving out. Yeah. You know, and I like what you said about budgeting yourself and yeah. all of that, right? Yeah. All right, so we have um, we have some views from the net that we would okay. like <laughs> you to also respond to. Now, some of our respondents are answering the question: As a single working class youth, how well do you show that the responsibilities in your family? Olufumilola from Ibadan is saying, "I was the last born." who has now taken the place of our firstborn because he passed away. Now, it's just myself and my sister. My mom is a retired nurse and doesn't have a lot of savings. So taking care of the home is all on me. I'm not doing bad though. At least I earn a little above 300,000 naira monthly, but of late it's been feeling like a whole lot of responsibility. My sister is preparing for the university. That's like a whole new cost on its own. Not to talk of utility bills, school bills, transportation, etc. My monthly income isn't able to cover all these things anymore. Some of them have even gone up from what they used to be. No thanks to Nigeria. So right now, it's me and Godo. Honestly, I'm sure he will come through from me. And this is actually leads into the next question I was going to ask you. You know, okay. um, given the economic climate that we're in, mm -hmm. you know, um, <laughs> uh, the economic climate that we're in is quite tough now. You know, with the new administration removing subsidy across board from yeah. the dollar, from the fuel and everything, yeah. um, price of goods have gone up, price of food has gone up. Mm -hmm. You know, considering that, you know, the working, the, the labor market is filled with these young people who are earning money, yeah. you know, does that, for instance, this responsibility that has been placed on only Fumilola, does it excuse it? Does it make it understandable why family members will be dependent, you know, on young people who are in the labor market making money at the moment? Okay, so uh, like I said earlier, it's 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 not really about the people making the demands. It's about you that are, you are obliging them. Right. And I always like to say that you must learn to do percentage giving hmm. um, or percentage spending say okay maybe your recurrent expenditure is x y percent mm -hmm. family needs is x y percent yeah. um savings because a lot of times these people are willing to kill the chicken that's laying out the egg you mm. have to be smart enough to be able to say i have some money kept aside for emergency funds um mm. i have money kept aside maybe for a quick investment so is you relocating they want to sell a car for a cheap price for you to resell you know so all of that has to be put in perspective right. then also you know the african culture makes us feel like jehovah jireh mm. the one that can provide for everyone you know mm. um I, I mean i sit on that particular table my my cousins and my siblings call me Baba Bukata because I'm the first son um, mm -hmm. and after my father passed, a lot of responsibility you know, came on me. But I said to my sister way, way before I even got married um, that I will not do business and I will put my, I will put family in charge of it. Mm -hmm. so, so that they won't say it's my wife that is teaching me to bluff off people. So there were certain things that I put aside, mm -hmm. you know, because the Yoruba particular culture is quite entitled mm. and you've got to be able to protect the chicken laying the egg so that the chicken doesn't stay full and becomes you know uh, get to a point where it's not even be able to produce in the first place so anyone who is in that seat where they call you strong woman whether they call you mm. Baba Bukata or they call you Lori Ebi one you know there's a lot, <laughs> the a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of those slangs are yeah. out there you've got to be able to borrow your self brain to be able right. to sit back and do your analysis and truly, I found out that even when you say no at certain thresholds, mm. they find alternatives. Actually, the there's alternatives always that are there. Yeah. You know, one, one of the tools we use in coaching is the T group model, where T is the topic, G is the goal, O is the option, uh, W is the way forward. The option is always where I dwell a lot with people who want to find solutions to their life. Mm. Because to every goal, to every goal, there are always options. Mm. And you are just a, you are, just, you are not a source, you are just an option. Mm. You are just a channel. Mm. So sometimes in the name of people calling you to say thank you, you are also, you know, groping in yeah. that, that euphoria that I was able to do it. It's fine. But first, deal with your esteem issues. Right. Deal with your fear of abandonment. Yeah. Deal with your childhood trauma. When you can deal with that, you will find out that you are able to say no yeah. when you should say no. And not that you say no, you say yes when you should say no. Yeah. Okay, I want to clarify something. So you're saying that, I want to clarify something okay. that you said, yeah. right? Uh, you're saying that people who um, give into this black tax culture mm. um, are people who are dealing with esteem issues, trauma issues. Not all of them. Uh, yes, actually, that's what I want to clarify. Yeah, not, not all of them. So I don't like it like one size fits all. 
some people have sorted it out and they've been able to put their feet down. Right. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people do what I call emotional blackmail. Mm -hmm. You know, you know that um, skit that say emotion now damage. <laughs> <laughs> so they come with that emotional right. blackmail. Uh, it was your uncle that sent you to school. Their children are now in school. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it. Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to explain to them. You know. Then I also say this on the counseling table. Don't tell everybody how much you're earning. When mm. you get a promotion, keep it to yourself. Mm. Because the some people bring when you're earning three hundred K they will bring straw. When they say that you're earning one million, they will bring industrial hose. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> what an analogy. <laughs> <laughs> because the need of human beings yeah. are insatiable, mm. you know? Mm. So so you got to be able to be privy to who should know. Sometimes even your mom or anyone who is a dependent should not even know. So everyone keeps you find out that when is that 300k everyone keeps mm. to that they know that I collected 25 2 weeks ago. They'll just say well, don't worry uncle I sorted it out. Yeah. But when you say oh I have a testimony. I now earn a million naira. Hey, you your billing just hey. went up. <laughs> <laughs> you just find out that um, before they used to turn off the AC because of their electricity bill that was increasing. They just find out that hmm. and the 10k per month will move to 25k. Hmm. You know why? Because the human needs are insatiable. Hmm. So you've got to be able to, like I said, make choices, yeah. set boundaries, do your budget. Yeah. But you can't do those three if you don't deal with your own identity crisis, yeah. you know. But for some people who do it genuinely and who have been able to cross that threshold where they can say no and look away, um, it thumbs up to them. For those who are struggling, you, the problem is not the black task culture. Mm -hmm. The problem is that you've got to deal with your childhood trauma issues, got to deal with your esteem issues, mm. you've got to deal with, um, you know, your, your fear of abandonment issues. Mm. If you don't deal with all of that, you find out that you say this is the boundary, you move it again. Then you say, oh, then don't worry, I, I have enough of everybody. Then again, they come, you know, because emotional okay. blackmail usually yeah. can be so, you know, so emotionally draining yeah. Yeah. that if you don't have a good esteem, they'll make you feel bad yeah. and you might even lose your sleep. Yeah. All yeah. right, so now let's, um, let's talk solution based. We're reaching the end of the interview. We still have games, which I'm going to beat you in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, now, before we, you know, go, before we end this conversation, I want you to address some viewers who are dealing with the pressure of black tax and don't particularly know how to say no. Mm. anymore do you understand you know mm. they are so deep in it now and they don't know how to have that conversation with their family members saying look i can't do this anymore mm. so how would you advise that they have that productive conversation with their family mm. and members okay so it depends on the relationship they have with different people because so what i found out in talking to different people is mr a comes to ask you for money but you don't tell mrs b Hmm. You know, then you tell Mr. A, don't tell anybody I give you 25000 But because Mr. A and Mrs. B are fighting and you are the trophy they're using to assert who has superior power, it hmm. breaks the code and goes to Mr. B and say, Yeah, Paul, <laughs> didn't I tell you that you will give me the money? I see giving you your own. So sometimes hmm. even that private conversation is not, uh, us doesn't usually work. So this is what I advise. You first start by doing the track record. Because sometimes some people don't even know where all their money goes. After they get their salary, they don't even know how the 300K disappeared. So first thing is keep a money diary to know exactly where did all your money go. Number two, have a conversation with, I mean, you don't even need Zoom. Mm -hmm. WhatsApp can do all of that. As we can, I want to talk to everyone who is the dependent. You know, actually the primary ones, the secondary and tertiary, you can do one-on-one -on -one with them. The primary one, which are, is your mom, maybe your sister, like this person who said this starts going to school and say, this is what I earn. This is what I'm saving so that I can have opportunities to even progress in the career yes, that we're all yeah. feeding from. But yeah. I can't do beyond X, Y, Z. Let's trust, I mean, we all believe in God. Let's trust God together that this need can be met. Please mm -hmm. understand with me. Because you see, if you cut the dependency circle and you don't have an explanation, they will begin to feel that you don't regard them. And you know, in mm -hmm. Africa, we're very cultural, very yeah. respectful. Mm -hmm. So have that conversation with them in a very respectful way. You've got to make it assertive, mm -hmm. but you don't have to be aggressive about it, mm -hmm. right? Once mm -hmm. you do that, then you draw the line. Mm -hmm. When they want to cross it, once you oblige them the first time, you will continually oblige them. Oh, should that be all? There must be a caveat. Mm -hmm. There are times when there are emergencies, and it has to only be health. 
Mm. Okay, maybe Momsi just developed um, it, something that wasn't expected, you know, and you are the only one. Maybe you, like this person lady said that her sibling, her other sister is dead. She's the only one bearing it. So mm. do what you can do. Then also try and expand your own circle. I don't believe that she could be the only one. Maybe a mom has a cousin, their dad has an mm. uncle, you know, so that you can have a pool to sort mm. out that. Um, but that's basically, then I will not end by not saying this. You've got to also seek help mm. to be able to deal with your own, do an analysis first. You know, when mm. people say, want to see me, I'll send them um, a form, a psychometric test to just help you do a proper diagnosis. You know, are you dealing with a personality disorder? Are you dealing with a mental health issue? This is what I find interesting from this, <laughs> you know. I'm um, relating it back to the psychology. The, oh, yeah. The psychology, um, psychological makeup of the person yeah. in question that is actually under this pressure. Yeah, right? very, very important. So it's very important that person actually does a, a form of checkup. On oh, yeah, do a checkup and seek professional help. Mm. Not a religious help, right. professional help. Mm. Um, because uh, because the religious circle has become a go-to for all people, and we appreciate the religious leaders for yeah. doing that. However, mm. I found out found out that it's not all religious leaders that are qualified mm. to give certain counsel. Actually. It takes professionalism. It takes experience. It takes certain tools, psychometric tools, that can help people first do a proper diagnosis. I always say to people that. When you do prescription without diagnosis, it's fraud. Mm. All right? Mm. So you do diagnosis, and what is found out from the psychometric test, then we can now say, okay, you're going to have four sessions, have six sessions, so that we can help you sort it out. Because right. every problem will persist if you don't get to the root of the symptom. Okay. All right. Tunji Babajide is our guest on Tea or Coffee this morning on the conversation of black tax. I've, been, I've learned a lot from you this morning. Black I had one opinion. I'm a bit now like, hmm, you know, because <laughs> I really believe that black tax is a, you know, as a cultural thing, I yeah. think that, you know, it's good that you support your siblings and yeah. you support your family. But, you know, as you've rightfully put, not to the point where you are straining yourself massively. Yeah. You need yeah. to be able to give what you, you have.